Magan here is the Chief Executive Officer of Trenchy Consulting LLP and today we would be covering a dedicated video about MIFID second MTF versus BCN which is Multilateral Trading Facility versus Broker Crossing Networks. As you very well understand that 3rd January 2018 MIFID second will get applicable across the globe and we also understand that MIFID second will change the regulatory landscape especially when it comes to the pre-transparency uh, reporting and post-transparency reporting. There are a lot of ambiguity which we have as far as the pre-transparency reporting is concerned and the pre and the post-transparency reporting is concerned. But these two something which we are not covering in this video. But one of the issues why MIFID second is in the news last two weeks is something like which we are planning to cover today. Without quoting the name of a person or the company or the institution, our financial institution two weeks ago in Europe launched a non-MTF in the energy sector. What is MTF? Multilateral Trading Facility. Let me explain you what do you mean by MTF. I hope all those people those are watching this video and they would have a license to both Reuters or Bloomberg or any one of them. They would have saw that like Reuters would have something which is known as trade, uh, which is known as trade web. On the other hand, Bloomberg would have EMSX. So both are, both are order management system and execution management system, both the feeders known as Reuters and Bloomberg. At the same time, they also act as a facility which is known as MTF, Multilateral Trading Facility. Now what is a Multilateral Trading Facility? A Multilateral Trading Facility is a facility whereby banks, interbank players, brokers, hedge funds, financial institutions, they come and interact with each other. Not interact, not talking, it's not a chatting messenger. Interact in the sense they come and do a trade at a platform. But this is a non-discretionary basis platform. Now what do you mean by non-discretionary basis platform is, in a non-discretionary basis platform, there are set of rules that rules has to be followed. Example, the rule of the margining, examples, the rule of the filling of the order, example the total kind of orders which are exist like pre-kill, full kill, uh, good till today, good till cancelled, good, uh, good till done and so on and so forth. So this is not discretionary basis and also what do you mean by non discretion is that the person who is running the MTF, example EMSX which is of Bloomberg, they have no right to tell to anybody that I don't want you. I don't want you. Example, Bloomberg will go to Citibank and say, no, I don't want Citibank. Bloomberg will go to Deutsche Bank and say, no, I'm not interested in Deutsche Bank. Or Bloomberg will go to JP Morgan Chase, so no, I'm not interested in JP Morgan, JP Morgan Chase. No. It's an open platform whereby bankers, interbank dealers, brokers, buyers, hedge funds, foreign institutional investors, qualified institutional buyers, they can come and interact with each other. However, we need to remember that it is a non-discretionary basis. On the other hand, we have something which is known as broker crossing networks. Now there is a big difference between broker crossing networks and broker dealer terminals. It's a very unfortunate fact that we have here in our system that many people, in fact those who are watching the video are thinking that broker crossing network is nothing but the broker dealer network. And there are many who tend to believe that broker dealer network is as equivalent to the interbank broker dealing. No, that is wrong. That is absolutely incorrect statement. Broker crossing network is a network which has been created, created by a broker. Example, Society General would have uh, Alpha Y, which is a BCN. There are many banks in the world without quoting the name, those who would have their BCN in place. In this, because banks himself play a multiple role as far as the financial market is concerned. One side they are acting as a financial institution, one side in the foreign exchange market they refer as a buyer and seller, another side they refer as a broker, one place they refer as an interbank trader, they play, they play multiple roles. One side they act as an investment banker, one side they act as a proprietary trading desk and so on and so forth. So they play a multiple role in, uh, you know, in, the, in, in that regards. But Broker crossing network means a platform which is created by specifically by bank, hedge fund or it could be a high frequency trading system. It depends upon the speed because if a bank would be creating that it won't be a high frequency trading because high frequency trading means split second. By the time you think 
it the, this, this this particular will get act this is high frequency trading so in this there is a there is a dissertion the dissertion means that a relevant bank is having a right to say no to you so example goldman sachs is having alpha y as a bcn and jp morgan chase is coming goldman sachs can say no to jp morgan chase and jp morgan chase cannot go to any regulatory and complain that why on which consideration goldman sachs uh, sorry the society general has said no to me this is bcn broker crossing network on the other hand we have one thing which is broker dealing network broker dealer networks is a is a form of ppp which is private placement platforms in a broker dealer network which are generally used when you when you do the underwriting so in underwriting when and especially in the hard underwriting when the banks or the or the investment bankers not been able to sell this product in the market but they generally do that they will buy because this is a form of hard underwriting and in the hard underwriting you know it's a broker dealer network so it's a it's a banks it's a it's a investment bankers broker who will buy this and they will access access the same using broker dealer network we have one thing which is also known as inter broker dealer network but from the mifid perspective things are little complicated in nature in the sense like let's take a small example you would have a client sir and you would have a client sir all these clients are connecting with one which is known as mtf which is a which is multilateral trading facility so this box is the multilateral trading facility in which we have kept the name of big banks like uh, jp morgan ubs goldman sachs city bank credit suisse royal bank of scotland royal bank of canada anz westpac dbs singapore dbs singapore bank of new zealand wells fargo and hsbc and the side which we have created is a bcn which is a broker crossing network which is society general goldman sachs ubs broker 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 ppp desk private placement platforms broker dealer networks and interbank broker dealer networks they are the one who participates in that but the point of contention is that in a mtf the same has to be regulated by the mifid second plus the local regulator if we talk from a euro perspective then everything which were mentioned trading here is is uh, regulated by mifid second under the laws of mifid second plus european central bank on the other hand if we talk about the broker crossing networks wherein there is a dissertion right and this is outside the scope of mifid second number one i fail to understand why bcn is is not in the scope of mifid second because mifid second is saying there could be three parties my mistake there could be three markets uh, which would we have one market is mtf multilateral trading facility good one is otf organized trading facility perfect one is rm which is regulated market i would like to understand where is bcn broker crossing network where is bdn broker dealer network where in interbank broker dealer networks why mifid second are not treating them as a market when few weeks ago without putting the name of a bank or a financial institution who created a non mtf in the energy sector we know that then in the mifid second we know that in the mifid second this time they are allowing energy sector to participate as an asset class because mifid 1 was restricted to equity while mifid second is is equities currencies derivatives strategies payoffs and so many things including emission derivative energy derivative structure product now my point of contention is if you are not including non mt non mtfs then you would have multiple time when there would be a financial institution without quoting the name who will come in the europe and they will create their own platforms how would you protect that and how would you protect bcn because during the fed second i might not be surprised that if we get to know that a non multilateral trading facility which is non mtf would act as a bcn because after all in a non mtf the 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 point of contention is in a non mtf right the in a non mtf you have no dissertion but basically it it is it, not discretionary you have dissertion in bcn you have dissertion the very thin line difference sitting today which is uh, 20 uh, 28th of july 2017 the only difference which is left between non mtf and bcn is the prop capital because non mtf do not support whether it's a mtf multilateral trading facility or non mtf 
नॉन मल्टीलेटरल ट्रेडिंग फैसिलिटी बोथ डू नॉट सपोर्ट प्रॉप कैपिटल वाइल बी सी एन सपोर्ट प्रॉप कैपिटल दिस इज द ओनली लाइन ऑफ डिफरेंस विच वी हैव टूडे एक्सेप्ट दैट इफ मिफिट सेकेंड विल नॉट चेंज द कोर्स then it quite possible that the kind of impact they wanted to give after 3rd january 2018 especially to the big derivative player like energy segment currency segment strategy segment payoff segments it might not happen and we have various banks those who have the big capability to generate their own bcn and they do have their bcn within days and one example which we have seen So the time has come when Mifid Second needs not only needs to understand the loopholes in their system, the flip sides in, into the system, but also try and regulate uh, BCN as a part of the as a part of the authorized market. This was the purpose of the video. In case you do have any questions, you're welcome to uh, uh, call me as nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. While my Skype ID is Rahul fifty three twenty seven. Our email is Rahul dot Pagan at the rate Treasury Consulting dot in. Do remember that Mifid Second is on the way. Treasury Consulting LLP is completely set. We are we are launching our videos, our fixed income platform, which is roughly by thirty first October. It's also covering Mifid Second. If you have any query, do contact us. Thank you and have a wonderful time ahead.